Have you ever wondered if all the cybersecurity analysts do the same thing? I know I have. It can be easy to generalize people into certain groups like SOC analysts handling day-to-day -day grunt work, managers for setting goals and keeping the team on track, and pen testers for finding gaps in security systems. Well, in this video, we'll find out specifically which type of SOC analyst you are. And if you're not in the industry yet, we'll find out which type of this role you might be interested in. We'll also talk about how much money each of the SOC analysts can make and experience required. As a bonus, I'll tell you guys about my experience and the tier I'm in as well. So make sure to stick around. Before we get started, I just want to point out that it might be different for some people depending on their company. For example, you could be a SOC analyst, but you're also required to do some development work based on your experience, which is the case for me. But this video should provide you a solid understanding of what to expect when you're getting into this role and industry. So when you're fresh in this industry, you always start at the bottom, which is tier one. A lot of responsibilities in this tier involves monitoring for suspicious activities and threats on existing systems. That means you're most likely doing reactive tasks like responding to alerts and tickets and anything that pops up on your security monitoring systems. Having basic security fundamentals allows you to do some basic troubleshooting and actions to remediate threats. An example security fundamental could be how different systems work and communicate with each other. Let's say a user receives a phishing email, then you need to understand which systems are involved in processing and handling this. So in this particular case, you could have a system that protects emails and the phishing attempt might have slipped through the initial detections on that system. So so now, as part of your overall security design, you could have alerts set up on your SIM platform to trigger when a user accesses a phishing website from that email. The website traffic would also be actively monitored by another security system. So when you have all of this fundamental knowledge, then you would know the actions to take like blocking the sender and deleting the email on your email security system, and then blacklisting the phishing website on your web security system. Other things you need to be in charge of is remediating vulnerabilities by routinely performing security scans across all of your points. When you're in this tier, you probably get the most amount of technical exposure to all the security systems, which is very important in building a strong foundation for your career in cybersecurity. Having said that, when it comes to salary, you're looking at a range of 60 to 80k a year. Keep in mind this is a junior role and the salary range is just a guide and ultimately it really depends on your educational background, your experience, how many years you have in this industry, and how much money a company is willing to pay for their security team. Moving on to the next tier, we have the tier to sub analysts. This tier is mid-level, which means you already have a couple of years under your belt, whether it be cybersecurity or another tech field. This means you can handle whatever a junior tier 1 SOC analyst can do, but on a deeper level. Usually when there's an incident, a tier 1 analyst will pick it up from their alerts and escalate it to a tier 2 analyst. When you're an analyst at this level, you know exactly which systems to dive into for your investigations. You will have more technical knowledge, so you know exactly what to look for in those system logs. You most likely would have had a past experience experience dealing with another similar incident, so you're able to provide a quick and adequate response. Another good indicator to see if you're in this mid-tier level is autonomy. What I mean by that is, if there's a task given to you, are you able to handle it all by yourself? Do you know what clarifying questions you need to ask when you've been given this task? And are you able to provide a general time frame to complete this task? When you're a junior, a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. So juniors tend to just accept the task without asking any clarifying questions. And then later down the track, they'll start bombarding you with lots of questions. Most of them, they could have easily Googled themselves. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, I always tell my team members to always ask any questions whether it's stupid or not. Because when you're in this industry, it's way better to be safe than sorry. But my point is, this is what separates you from the junior level. When you're at the mid level, you're able to adapt to situations. For example, if I was given a task to set up a way to ingest logs from another application into our SIEM solution, the first questions I would ask is, does the app provide a native integration within our SIEM solution? What kind of logs are we after and for what purpose? Then I would take these clarifying questions to initiate my research and start testing within our environment. Let's say the native app integration is bad and unsupported. Instead of just telling that to my manager, I would do more research into other ways of ingesting the logs. For example, maybe there is some REST API I can use in a Python script to generate the logs and send it to our team. So instead of reporting just your problems to your manager and waiting for them to give you an answer, you have some autonomy which is taking the initiative to find your own answers first and then have a discussion on your proposed solution with your manager. In this example, once I propose a solution, I will come up with an actionable plan. As you can imagine, this is based on experience. 
tasks. As you progress through from tier 1, you would have come across with different tasks which required you to have different methods of approach. During this time, you would also have an idea of how long it would take for different methods as well. So using those prior experience, you would be able to deduce a rough game plan and a time frame required to complete the task. Then it's just a matter of checking off the list as you progressed. Understandably, with more experience comes with a higher salary. When looking at an annual range of between 90k to 110k when you're a tier 2 stock analyst, are you surprised by this number? Leave your thoughts and comments down below. I'm keen to see what you guys think. Okay, so now we're stepping into the top of the pyramid, which is our tier 3 stock analysts. Tier 3 stock analysts are at the top of the hierarchy, which means they are on a senior level with at least 5 years of experience in the cybersecurity space. When you're at this level, you'll be able to handle everything that occurs at your job. Things like making important decisions for an incident, to being a direct key member to communicate with the executive team. Second to your manager, the key responsibilities in this space is being involved in the security architecture designs, so stuff like proposing new security vendors to uplift existing systems, all the way to fully technical stuff like resolving complex issues. Sometimes people might even consider tier 3 stock analysts to be on the same level as a stock manager. At this level, you also be heavily involved in threat hunting. So a quick explanation of what a threat hunting is. It basically means hunting for threats that are dormant or may have slipped past the security systems. For example, we could have an application that was installed on a laptop before being onboarded to an EDR solution. Since EDR solutions are geared towards detections and response, a malicious application might have already been installed on a user's device and wouldn't be picked up by any detections since it's dormant. This is where threat hunting comes in. Usually we would need a threat intel feed to let us know what to look for. Some examples of threat intel feed could be malicious IP addresses, hashes, domains, URLs, and so on. Usually this intel feed would be a paid service, which we will need to run our SIEM solution against the intel feed to see if we have any threats laying around. You will also need to stay up to date with new cybersecurity news and vulnerabilities that comes out on the web. This means you need some sort of a news feed which you need to always monitor and see if your systems are impacted. At this senior level, you need to have a good technical knowledge around all the systems that you use, especially your SIEM solution. And if something goes wrong, then you will be the person that gets the blame. This might be a bit controversial, but that's the way it is. If a junior team member under you messes up, sometimes the upper management might look at you and say, you're the senior here, you should have known better, or you should have known everything that's happening in your environment. That's not something that's happened to me yet, so fingers crossed. So being the top dog of this hierarchy, you will be earning the top dollar as well. The average salary in this level can earn you up to 120k to 150k a year, which is pretty high for a technical role. Now if I were to place myself in those tiers, I would I would say I'm at tier 2, with a mix of some tier 3 responsibilities. That's because our security operations team is still maturing, so I was pretty much thrown into a lot of different tasks. And my experience and stress level kind of just shot up exponentially. The things I do at my role includes everything a tier 1 and 2 SOC analysts would do, and also creating automations and other development work for threat hunting. In terms of salary range, I would say I fall within the salary guide, maybe slightly on the higher end. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video insightful. Give it a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to check out my other videos especially the day in life videos so you guys have an idea of what a tier 2 stock analyst do thanks for watching